with your wife. The third is as heirs together of God's grace. This is the great equality, and I'm revisiting it as I'm running out of time. But I'm going I'm to deal with this. The equality of grace. Grace is the basis of all our equality in the sight of God. God's unmerited, demerited favour, which he freely bestows upon us in Christ. Wives are daughters of Sarah, their husbands and wives together are children of Abraham and heirs with Christ, joint heirs with Christ. Husband and wife are co-heirs, co-heirs of the grace of life. There are no separate accounts in the bank of God's grace. No separate accounts. We all draw on the same account. We all have the same inheritance. It's a shared inheritance of husband and wife. We are heirs together of the manifold grace of God. That's the knowledge with which a husband ought to live with his wife. And I guess there are times when together... We ought to sit down and count our blessings and name them one by one. Maybe it will surprise us what the Lord has done. Join us and we can then thank God together uh, that, that God has lavished upon us the riches of his grace in the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, and if we are husbands, uh, we and, and understand that we are heirs together with our wives, uh, it should be no hardship to uh, give to them the honour that they deserve and which God requires. So that's the third requirement, that we live together as heirs of the grace of life, that abundant life which God has given us in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then the fourth way uh, to live with our um, wives is as those who facilitate prayer, who make prayer easy and not difficult, not hindering prayers. Uh, he's thinking here about uh, the prayers offered by the husband and wife jointly or individually. Uh, but there is a way in which the interaction can adversely affect those prayers. It's not about how to conduct a healthy prayer life as such. It's about how we can prevent each other from praying. Now, can you imagine that? Can you imagine any husband wanting to prevent his wife praying? Or vice versa for that matter. But that could be the effect of thoughtlessness, of pride, of wrongly estimating one's importance, uh, of misunderstanding one's role as a husband, of undervaluing one's spouse, of failing to match privilege with responsibility in the exercise of one's duty as a father and a husband. All varieties of sinful behavior coming out in, our, uh, in the way we express ourselves as husbands can adversely affect the prayers of our wife. And, of course, our own prayers too. Wives need heaven's door to be open. Do not close it to them. Don't allow them to become so anxious and distracted and threatened and feeling that and worried that they feel that they can't please us that they cannot now pray without that distraction if we pick that up as husbands we will learn to pray effectively and so here we are how to live with your wife as a husband. Four ways of doing it.
Calvin says about this whole matter of prayer, we are more than insane if we knowingly and willfully close up the way to God's presence by prayer, since this is the only asylum of our salvation. Um, sometimes I think of, of the uh, Korean church in, in, in its very difficult days, and the legacy of it you can see in Korean churches now, because when it was impossible for them to gather to worship God faithfully, the one thing they could do and did do was pray. And, and they survived by prayer. That was the asylum of their salvation. That was the one place they could go to, as it were, the one thing they could do. When they couldn't read the scriptures publicly, when they couldn't worship, when they couldn't uh, sing hymns, when they couldn't hear the word of God, they could pray. If you go to a, a conservative Korean church now, you could be there an hour before the service. What are they doing? You'll see people bowed in prayer, praying to the Lord. And that's a habit that they learned in difficult times, because prayer is the asylum of our salvation. So, four ways. According to knowledge, showing honor as heirs together of the grace of life and facilitating each other's prayers so as not to impede them. The Lord speaks to us as husbands as he does to wives. He will speak to all of us in various ways. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Almighty God, we, we bow before your heavenly throne and confess that we are not the people we ought to be. We thank you for Christ our Saviour, who is the right and proper man, the one who is obedient to your will even to the point of death. Oh, we pray that the mind of Christ might be found in us, and we pray that your Holy Spirit might conform us to his likeness. We pray in his name. Amen.